thank you so much for joining me today. You know, to start, I was hoping you could just kind of introduce yourself and maybe tell us a little bit about how you implemented the Resilient Youth Program at Byron High School. My name is Dawn Glassburn. I have been teaching physical education at Byron High School for 18 years. And I knew with the COVID situation, I wanted to do more on the mental health instead of just physical education this year. And so I was searching on the internet and came across your program. And I'm just so thankful. I implemented the youth resiliency during our second semester. And the way I did it was I had one session every other week. And that seemed to be a nice pace that they weren't overwhelmed with it and they weren't doing, uh, oh, this again, but they actually were like, oh, good. It's a youth resiliency day because they knew they didn't get to do some meditation or some chair yoga or something that was beneficial for them. And I was just expecting a lot, but I think it was even more than I had hoped for. Awesome. That's great. That's great. Thank you so much. So great to hear. Can you maybe talk about some of the benefits that your students experience and if you got a success story or two that you could share? Sure. The benefits were definitely visible in when the kids came into my classroom, they were calm. They knew that it was a safe environment. And I didn't change a lot about my teaching, but I definitely had a focus on the youth resiliency in my life so that I was a calm, safe spot for them. And when they would come into the classroom, I can't tell you how many students were just like that exhale <sighs> because of all the stress in their other classes. So we definitely stressed how they can use these tools that they were given outside of class. So some of the success stories range from a kid that was swimming in the regionals for sports and he did the deep breaths and got his focus and he ended up winning his relay and was ecstatic about that. The other success story was one of those girls who are so quiet and you just don't know if you're getting through, but she wrote me a very nice note about the rethinking and the mindfulness because she has that negative voice in her head and assume that everybody did. So when we did that lesson, we really talked about this is everyone's battle and that it's not going to go away, but we can recognize it and then really look for those truths. And she said that was a savior. She got out of a bad relationship with a boy that was not healthy for her and just feels lighter and you can even see in her walk that she's walking more confidently. So I just, I loved that. Oh, that's wonderful, wonderful here. Yeah, it's great that, you know, you can apply these to, to sports, to really anything. And, and that negative thinking is, it's good for the kids to kind of see that, hey, everybody's going through the stuff that I'm going through. Yes. And there are things that I can do. That's awesome. Uh, next question for you, any, any cautionary tales? So anything you would, you know, for new teachers that are about to start implementing Resilient Youth, maybe suggestions you'd have or things to watch out for? I would definitely look at your pacing, not do it like eight days in a row or anything where they feel overwhelmed. The time in between helped us to kind of process and practice before going to the next one. But the other thing is just realizing you can't control the results. You can only control the intentions. And the students that got a lot out of this may not be the ones that you're aware are getting a lot out of it. So just love them all. That's excellent. That's wonderful. Uh, last question for you. Just any any important piece of advice. What's the last piece of advice you give any teachers implementing the program? Take this program serious and uh, really look at all the aspects of it. Your kids are going to benefit and uh, you just don't know those ripple effects that it can have. Mm -hmm.